Hi, it's Humanimo. So, I'm a Kiwi. I live in Brisbane, Australia. And I just wanted to talk about New Zealand um, a little bit with regards to um, this worldwide um, situation and about New Zealanders um, and their politics and how it sort of relates today to what's happening. Um, so Kiwis, I mean, we are marchers. Um, Kiwis have always been quite progressive and <clears throat> stand up for what they want. And that could be the suffragette movement and giving women a vote very early. Um, and it could be to do with racial politics. Um, so in 1991, when I was, um, 10 years old, I, um, now these are different times as well. So I went door to door for Hart, which was Holt Hall racist, racist tours, um, because what a group of us wanted to do, um, was not let the Springbok team from South Africa come and play rugby because, we didn't want to support um, apartheid, the politics of South Africa, separating black and white. And, um, you know, definitely a lot of people at the time, there were plenty of people thinking, well, you know, that's another country's um, business and everything. But a lot of people and a lot of, you know, um, middle class and, and university educated people um, did not want the Springboks to come and tour, we thought that they shouldn't be allowed because we just did not agree um, with apartheid. So um, this is, um, and Hamilton was kind of the centre of it. I was born in Hamilton. It's in a province called Waikato. Um, our provincial rugby team is um, affectionately called the Moo Cows. Um, anywho, so... Hamilton, um, yeah, there was a big stink there. We had protesters at the um, field and everything, and um, that game was actually cancelled. Um, but, you know, so, concert, yeah, apartheid and, and the Springbok tour still carried on. Um, but Nelson Mandela was in jail at the time still, and... Um, yeah, he heard all about it and he said, well, this was just like the sun came out, you know. And um, that year, still in 91, so we had um, <laughs> Peggy Muldoon was our Prime Minister and he did just get in back in um, to power. He was National Party and, um, yeah, it was just by a little margin. Um, but then in 1984, there was this just landslide win for, for Labour um, under David Longy, and um, this is all amongst, you know, a whole lot of reform and marching. Um, this is the no nuke era, so what came in at this exciting period in our history in New Zealand was um, no nuke, so no nuclear legislation. Um, so that was for not letting um, nuclear-powered warships or subs into our waters, not having nuclear um, arms ourselves and not having um, nuclear power. Um, and another thing that happened actually, that was there was homosexual law reform at that time as well. And so, you know, New Zealand has always felt, and, and I mean, I guess really actually been really special and really um, progressive but, you know, vocal about what they believe in and not just letting things slip by and just, you know, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I don't like all the bleeding heart stuff and sometimes I've thought Jacinda Ardern, she's driven me a little bit crazy. But at the moment, it really is a case of leave it to Jacinda. She locked down the country. Okay, so this brings me to the point of this was... Um, Kiwis have said, look, we're really not sure about 5G, five generation. Um, 
we're not sure of the effects of it we need to know more before we let this happen and it's actually been halted for the time being not to say that it won't come in but 5g has not been implemented in new zealand at all um and five um and new zealand went into quite tight lockdowns but not before some people arrived from overseas who did have let's just say you know the virus um so there's been clusters in new zealand um, of covert so what happened was in one instance in queenstown which is a resort town and it's where a lot of people have conferences um someone arrived from overseas for a conference and was sick and has been tested and you know for covert and has it and um, that person has created a cluster there of new zealanders who have never been exposed to 5g whatsoever and um, they have the same symptoms and they have the same tested illness the other cluster of note was in again another place in the south island this time called bluff and bluff is a um yeah really little town down down the far south and i think oh gosh bad new zealander you know i can't quite remember actually where bluff it might not be the south south i might be getting confused with Invercargill. but anyway um a couple were getting married and I think because they had you know obviously marriage takes a lot of um, planning they had people coming in from overseas and everything well actually they went ahead with their wedding and someone from overseas was ill has again been tested for covert and has it um, and 55 people um, from people that took part in the um, wedding to people that you know suppliers and people helping with the wedding um, they all got ill and tested. So New Zealand overall um, has had one fatality and three people that have been in ICU. Um, but you know, I just wanted to say, yes, it's not that I don't take things on board about what's happening because, I mean, I actually have some pretty whack ideas that fly around in here you know and some um i'll post something down below that i've been putting on a few of my other videos just by david bohm um a physicist who is um yeah very interesting um but you know, people in New Zealand have gotten sick and they have not been around 5G um, and they are linked to people that have come in from overseas. So, you know, you can't say that they've got a sickness from being exposed to 5G itself. Um, it could just be some sort of flu that's been called COVID. Yes, I, I realise all of that. Um, but I just hope people can just stop and think about that little side of it. Um, you know, New Zealand is a little bit special in that regard, I guess, because it's a little bubble there where you can clearly um, take some information to analyze um that's quite clear cut you know uh, i don't know if that's helpful or means anything to anyone who knows um but i just wanted to say that anyway yeah so thanks for listening to me ramble on um yeah if anyone's interested in um a physicist who is very interested in the universe and and trying to ex I can't explain it obviously very well not very quickly in a couple of sentences either but you know that the universe exists not only physically but in a mental state in our mental state and um, David is interesting in the fact that he realizes the importance of language in creating ideas and creating 
reality and he, he actually invented his own language called Rio Mode. Uh, but yeah, David Bohm, um, or Bohm, B-O-H-M, um, unfortunately has um, already died. I would have been very interested to hear what he had to say about what's going on. Um, but I'll, I'll put a few links. But he's on YouTube, actually. There's the U, um, there's the David Bohm organization or something on, on YouTube. You'll find it if you look. And there's a lot of recorded talks that David made, some of them from the 80s and everything. Um, I don't know how much we knew about viruses then. I find, found it interesting that, you know, people, because we talk about computer viruses and David Bohm at the time even was talking about viruses being something that can be passed from one another. I mean, I do understand that viruses are in our body and maybe they activate at certain times, but perhaps they are something that passes as well. I don't see why that shouldn't be the case. Um, you know, but or is it the case that, well, we really need to rename what um, people send around to infect our computers too? Maybe there's no such thing as a computer virus then if a virus can't be spread that way. What are you going to call it? Are you going to, you know, what is a, a virus? Is it a, um, is it more something like, oh, it's a catalyst program or it's a, a bacteria? Anywho. Yet again, I'm rambling, but look, I'll be keeping it under 11 minutes 30. How about that? Um, feel free to speed it up to two times.